Hi, it's good to see you again. The sheep are, are ready to milk. They, I've been milking them at 9 p.m., 9 a.m. Good girl. She's waiting to be milked. She's so patient, yeah. Thank you. Good girl, my Annie. Annie, Annie, Annie. I, I view everything that I'm doing as juggling milk. Thank you, my Annie. What a good shape. Good girl. That's a lot of milk. I'm just... Yeah. Yeah, she one twice a day. Yeah, this is a little bit more than a quart, and she uh, she gives uh, two of these a day, and the other one gives two of these a day too. So they're giving a gallon a day. Hey, look at all this foam. This is all fatty cream. Wow, it's good ice cream, I bet. Yeah. And cheeses, probably all of that's great. Yeah, yeah it's so creamy. That's <laughs> so much. It's ridiculous. What I'm doing is trying to figure out how to make use of milk as it comes out. There's a whole quart of ice cream there in this little machine. All oh, of this little machine. $120 ice cream machine. <laughs> Things are getting so affordable. <laughs> it's so tiny. My battery was a little low, so I didn't, didn't want to turn it in there this morning. It's funny, because you're a nice mix of modern and, and sort of traditional, right? Yeah, and I'm trying to sift through like what we used to do. Just take from the past what worked best. Uh, right. Back here is a battery that is, it's a, only a 500 watt hour mm -hmm. battery. Do you have solar or you? Yeah, 150 watt on the top. That text. Modern. Be there in a few. Gracie's coming over to trade some meat. Oh, cool. That butcher, butcher friend. Nice. So I have three of these fridges now. I got a backup for a backup. Yeah. I've been using them every single day for over a year now and they have not one of them has failed on me. What's in there? These are five, <gasps> five cheeses. That's a lot. So that cheese will last you a while. <laughs> well, yeah, this is like the, that. This is from when I was getting like three gallons a day. And so I, I, did, I have such access to the milk. So my goal is like figure out how to move this milk in its whatever varied form that makes it most desirable for people to want to barter their other food. Hi, Gracie. Why? Well, you brought a couple things. These are just pigs. Uh -huh. And then the breakfast sausage nice. and then your bacon. Oh my god, thank so you all three of them. Yeah. Oh go ahead, yeah, thank so you. Thank you. These are some herbs. Sage, mint, kale. Oh my god, thank Hi. you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, I got some uh, smoked ice cream. It's my first batch, it's a little strong, but um but and I got some cheeses too. These ones are the two biggest ones, so little one, yeah, they really do, yeah. <laughs> I just got an ice cream machine for my sheep's milk and it's freaking amazing. It's just honey, my sheep's milk and salt. So this is smoked with pecan wood. I think it's a little strong on the smoke flavor, even though I put it in early. But that's good. Is that interesting? Mm -hmm. And I'm going to make uh, smoked cheeses too. So I'm super excited to, to, to smoke the cheeses. Okay, I'll keep going with the meat. You keep going with this stuff. Cool. She's interested in the milk and a couple other people are interested in the milk, but it's not enough to get uh, to move it consistently enough to where I don't have to hold on to it in a refrigerator. Man, that ice cream is good. Yeah, I owe you a pint of it uh, and I'll freeze it overnight. I have beef coming, so are, is there any cuts you want of that? Uh, just looking for the hearts and liver. You want hearts and liver? Yeah. Everything that I'm doing is an experiment in juggling milk. <laughs> I dehydrated my low fat cheese. It dehydrates a lot more efficiently when I separate the cream out. Butterfat beforehand. I have a cream separator, manual cream separator now. And I have three different thicknesses, richnesses of cream. This is a little thicker. It's so thick. But this was heavy. So thick it has a layer of butter on top. Chicken the butter, chicken the butter, chicken the butter. Chicken. Basically, I, I view everything that I'm doing is how to make use of milk with the different lactation cycle levels and stuff. This is after 10 minutes, maybe five minutes. All right, starting to get harder to shake. Who turns? You can hear it starting to shake again. Butter and the buttermilk underneath. So I've got it all figured out to where I want to balance a year-round cheese making 
outdoors, that's the key, outdoor, no room temperature, on the go without any refrigeration or evaporative cooler. So most of that was butter. I filled this up 45% of the way. It was just under 50%. There's that much buttermilk, maybe. I wrote it down, actually. More milk and less lactations. Uh, a quart per milking or more, then that's the best time to make butter. So bigger cheeses and butter making for larger lactations. And then once you start to get down into a quart to three cups per milking, the ice cream maker that I have is a quart size batch. And so it's by far the most efficient once I get down to that to just start converting it into batches of ice cream. But then once I start to get down under three cups, it becomes time to make, I invented this single batch cheeses. That's, is that like a fresh cheese? Yeah, this is a fresh cheese okay. and then, but I've been putting holes in the sides. So I'm, I'm dialing in how many holes it'll need in order to self ripening box itself. Basically the amount of moisture that it's weeping out evaporates off and it actually keeps the cheese cool. So it's its own evaporative cooler. Did you create basically. this? Yeah. So I had to find a cheese mold that had a lip first of all. So I ordered dozens of these cheese molds that were around the size of a standard jar. So it's easy to just stick my whisk in there and break up the curds, set them out in the sun, let the sun's additional heat weep away more of the whey and pour off that whey and then eventually pour the curds directly in here. This is a cheese mold, a cheese press and a cheese cave all in one. Like, like I'm trying to simplify as, as much as possible for like someone living out of a backpack with a goat. So n next, the ice cream machine is, I think that's very reasonable of moving the milk because people's taste buds are so domesticated. And so they're not used to the cheeses and they're not used to the kefir and they're not used to the milk, but they're used to ice cream. Oh my God. Pretty good for just being made out of a, a wagon, huh? Absolutely. Fresh milk this morning. Oh my God. <laughs> Until crap hits the fan, an ice cream machine is going to be very helpful for anyone who has a dairy pet who is wanting to make use of the excess milk. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. I, it's it's donation based. That's, I'll be right back. No, thank you. Thank no, you. Really, That's I mean... freaking awesome. Mm -hmm. We saw this little pop up market, and and so yeah, farm stand with farm food, sheep ice cream here, is my new sign. I just gave someone a free sample of some ice cream, and they actually came back and gave me a bag of their garden veggies. I just moved a gallon of milk that I made into ice cream. I was able to convert it into $57 and two bags of groceries. Let's go. So where are you headed? Just right here. Why? Uh, because uh, my friends have a property there that uh, they have invited us to graze and the sheep have only been there once in the last months and it's right here. It's so good so lush i gotta diversify their their diet and give them a new salad so you're kind of more in one spot or at least we've been two years now in one spot is that yeah because i've been trying to figure out an animal to help pull this wagon with its heavier you know refrigerator weight and solar battery weight i got my first donkey she was much taller like and it was too dangerous Do you know like ranching is one of the most deadly professions so for a survival animal I don't think that it's very intelligent to have that animal able to harm you, even if it doesn't mean to. I've just realized that uh, I, I'm that animal that I've been looking out for. I just needed to, uh, to utilize the, the sled harness. Let's go. The other thing is the donkey is so much slower than my ram. My ram likes to run and the donkey does not like to run. Yeah, do we put them graze? Because it is a 10 on a scale from one to 10. This is a 10 right now. So are you less nomadic now? Uh, I have been for the last uh, year and a half that I've had this fridge. I've been a ball and chain literally physically because I have been trying to figure out uh, how, to, how it can be hauled the minimum 10 miles it takes to get to the next farm. And so, yeah, I think that the donkey is not as good of a solution for that. Because donkeys are really expensive. You can get dairy goat all day long for $150, but, but I, I donkey you're gonna have to pay uh, 1500 for and that, that's a good deal so are you thinking you're gonna sell her yeah i'm gonna rehome her and i'm going to get a sled harness that bodybuilders use to pull huge tires behind them and have the back of it attached right here and have just enough slack on it to where i can come out to the side and be pulling on my my rams 
halter. I think that's, that's the smartest way for people to create their own micro camper and to power it. Then, then you have plenty of power, but not too much power. And the most important thing is like, I'm able to haul right now 24 hours of water for all of us easily. But if, if, I, if I rehome her and, and take her position pulling, helping my ram pull, then we'll be able to stay out for two days, more, two and a half days. Yeah. Smoke, smoked ice cream. <laughs> See, I like it. She thought it was a little too strong, smoked flavor too. She did. Yeah. Oh, oh no. <laughs> Love to try it. Start, starting to melt, right? Oh wow, look at this presentation. Thank you. I just uh, refroze it so it's refreezing. After it turns it, then I uh, hit the freeze button and then it freezes it harder. So the next, in the next 10 minutes, it'll, it'll harden up. It's oh, good, it's good, it's good, it's good. I think it's very necessary to have this ice cream, but then after that, you know, your cheese, your milk, uh, kefir is gonna be the most sought after thing. And here's my kefir with the kefir grains in it right here. Kefir granules, they digest the sugars that are in the milk and convert it into a thicker substance that is just so packed with B vitamins. And it doesn't need to stay cold. Uh, yeah, that's the beauty of it is that it needs temperature. Some aged kefir cream cheese. It needs like room temperature to 90 degrees in order to like to ferment in any timely fashion to where you could use it to move milk. So people having liquid kefir on their skins and traveling with it, they've been doing that for a long time, right? In the animal skins? In their animal skins. Uh -huh. It's disputed how kefir came about, but um, from what I've read, it came about from them storing the, uh, the milk in the skins for so long that the microbes that are naturally in uh, the milk and in the environment were left for so many years that they eventually grew actual uh, uh, matrix of a microbial colony, like a balance of multiple microbes. So this is rennet. Um, I'm gonna put this uh, directly into the, um, the bottom of the milk jars. So that's to start the cheese. Yeah, so normally cheese makers, they will milk their, their animals and then they'll use fire to heat up their pot. And once it gets up to 90 degrees, then they put in the rennet. But the milk comes out at 104.5 degrees. So if you're ready and, and you just put the, pour the milk from the milk bottle right. warm directly into the rennetted jar, that's all it needs. And then it quickens the cheese making process. You see mama? Let's go. Normal pets are consumer pets, but my sheep are producer pets. So I, I differentiate all pets as whether they take more from you or whether they give more. She's definitely smarter than most of the sheep that I've ever had. She looks at you in the eye more like a dog, you know? Oh, my missy, missy, missy. Uh, you've had a dog before? Yeah, I actually got into getting my own dairy goats to feed my dog a more sustainable diet because I wanted to feed him quality food, but I, didn't, I couldn't afford it. And so I, yeah. I started a goat share program originally and I didn't <laughs> never intended on walking around with goats. Did you grow up around here? No, the Midwest. And learning to milk, was that an easy process? Uh, you didn't grow up milking. Yeah, no, I didn't. Like Later on, my folks got a farm and had goats after I left, but I had no experience in milking goats. So I had to learn. I had to learn with the first two goats that I got. Holistic processes is something most lacking in humans' modern day-to-day -day life that we used to have. Like milking, for instance, I'm milking my own sheep and expanding that whole process is so like I'm milking my sheep and then I'm consuming it. Good girl. Yeah. And then maybe creating cheese, you know. So this already has the rennet in the bottom of it. This is the type of thing that you want to buy a bunch of before crap hits a fan because it's going to be the most bartered thing and so easy to. I've learned to make uh, my own rennet. 
You just take the fourth stomach of, of the ruminant and dry it out with salt. And then you just cut off a piece, uh, like a very tiny corner of that and put it into warm water. But this is the crystallized version, store-bought version. So this is still 100, 100 degrees plus this milk. And the milk only needs to be 90 degrees in order to coagulate the ruminant. So this is easier than having to put it into a pot and warm it back up. So then I'll shake it. I got five, about five minutes before the cheese curds start to set. <clears throat> We've all been compartmentalized up into having individual jobs, so we don't even know how sacred like a whole process, we don't even know what a whole process, I don't even know what a whole process is. I'm gonna set these out in the sun. Heating it helps to draw the whey out of the curd quicker. Because you know, I've only got you know so many generations in this, and it hasn't been family generations, you know, that adds a whole nother block of, of holistic experience. The only reason that people, they age their cheeses in cheese caves at like 55 degrees is to slow down the microbes. So you, you ripen cheeses and once they get perfectly ripe, then you send them off to market. The best way to, to catch that at the, right at the beginning and to have the widest window of marketability, best buy date, is by going slow. You can go fast. You just have to be, you have to be a quicker juggler. And this is like really complex cheeses. Like, cause basically nowadays, they pasteurize all of the natural microbes, like dozens of microbes that come stock in the milk. Yeah. They pasteurize it and then they put in a, basically a genetically mod modified culture. Cool. This one is like a cheddar with a, a little bit of a bloomy rind. All cheeses can be divided up into three main cultures that, that the, the companies add to it. And depending on the size of the cheese and the size of the cheese curds and how densified they are, then it makes up the varied cheeses. There's all just three main bacterial lineages of cheeses, and that's the, the blue cheeses that we know uh -huh. of, the bloomy rind cheeses that are white, those are like the brie cheeses. Okay. And then the bee linens is the other microbe that they use that is the stinky cheeses like Limburgers. And then you have the cheddaring process. You can cheddar any of those cheeses. Oh, okay. And so this one is a, a cheddar with a bloomy rind. I, got, I think I ate all the, 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 um, the stinky ones are the ones that go first. They mature, they mature oh, which... them the quickest, yeah. This one's a blue, oh, yeah. a blue cheese. Blue cheese with a bloomy rind. All three of those microbes are in our environment everywhere. Oh. And, and they're the most prolific. That's the reason that they're the main lineage, they become the main lineages. And so blue cheese is the most dominant in the air. Okay. And then the bloomy rind is the next most dominant. And then the bee linens is most dominant on our bodies. It's actually what they, what makes us stink. What makes our armpits stinks is the same thing that makes, makes the cheese stink. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you see that? that's why it probably resembles. I mean, when you it smell both, you, it smells like stinky socks. Yeah, for yeah. sure. It's the same exact bacteria in your stinky socks. They each like their different salt levels. This one is this is more heavily cheddared. And so basically what you can do is you salt the outside and by how much you salt it, you're inviting in the, the specific mi microbe. So you're cultivating the outside of it on the cheese itself. Yes. Yeah, so, prior to so it, the, right? so okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I don't add any cultures. I leave it. I leave it. So not only do I have the cultures that they have that aren't genetically modified, but they're also there's also the innate microbes that are that are all in it. This one's a very bloomy rind. It's beautiful. I lo lo love this. I love that. It's fascinating. With our quest for sterilization, a lot of these processes they they fell behind right and then now it seems that a lot of people realize that some of those drinks and foods are super healthy and it's yeah pasteurization of, of our lives is not a good thing my keeper and good good a big one You silly sheep! Jay-Z's begging for a treat through my curtain. Through my Sterilizing our world has made people healthier and safer, but 
I think that if you don't if you don't use it, you lose it, and your immune system is part of that. <laughs> you can't even get this creamy with cream cheese. I've been aging this cheese for a couple weeks, if not three weeks, without any refrigeration. And I think if I take it past this point, it might get too dry, or the rind might get too large. Ooh, interesting cut into it. Like it has a hard cut into it, and that slips in. The inside's still soft, it feels like. Wow. Three week old cheese, aged in a paper bag without any refrigeration. All right, cutting open. One of my stinky cheeses. It's like a Limburger. We used to consume so many more microbes through a less sanitary lifestyle. Those microbes, it's a double-edged sword because they do help give our immune system practice. That inside solid is starting to get pretty ripened. It's the stuff that starts to get really stinky. It does also introduce more rolls of the dice that there could be an imbalanced microbe. Mm. But if it doesn't kill you, then it makes you stronger because then you have immunity to that next time that that microbe comes around your colony. Sheep cheese, the local bacon. Yes, it, it's made people healthier who were weaker. And the last of the lamb rams meat. I got some of my sheep's cheese in there too but it's made all of us weaker by sterilizing our, our environment. Look at my Jenny. Look at my Jenny. Got a lamb, egg and potato for dinner tonight. Sheep cheesy potatoes. When you think about culturing your own food. Whipped sour cream. And you experience that in comparison to coming from like a domesticated overly sanitized diet like I've come from, it's it, like night and day. All right, my grilled sheep cheese is ready. I can only say that I've experienced that my body prefers a healthy mix of microbes and does not prefer an overly sterilized environment or diet. And this is pine. We'll see how pine ice cream tastes like. <laughs> Strange for ice cream though. Well, the, the maple uh, and pecan wood are supposed to be the best White maple makes sense because you're used to maple syrup. Okay. We're, we'll see. Wow. If we're growing or producing our own food, it's going to make us feel psychologically better. So it's not just like our physical health we are what we eat, but if we're engaged with that process, then it's uh, that, that's yeah, that's the biggest secret. It has twenty dollars. These little <laughs> culinary smokers. I guess like all bars have this, and they're starting to like. Uh, smoke whiskeys and stuff like that, and it's like, is yeah, it's like super popular. Smoke really whiskey. cool. And now what? So now I just put it to the side and let that for the next five minutes, and it'll coagulate into the curd. At this stage, after it sets, right. then I can haul it around all day without refrigerating it. For making ice cream, I need to put it in the ice cream machine within the next four hours. But if I wanted to leave that curd in there for 48 hours, it would actually just make better cheese. And actually, I'm gonna set it right here in the sun to give it a little bit more heat. Okay. This is Missy. I love I love how she looks at you. She's she came she came completely like neglected. She was neglected out in a field for three years. They left her, and she had three years of, of wool on her. Sheared it off. Actually, it became this right here. Really? This pad right here, yeah. You know the providence of everything. <laughs> yeah, this is my Rams. Ah. Yeah. These are my new winter curtains. These were a game changer. These were so nice. Oh my goodness. It's it so it was game changer. I I absolutely love these curtains. I can't believe it's taken me this long to do it. Because it's just so much warmer. Yeah, and, and you can you can just tailor it, you know, like I just want the center ones open, you know, to let it in just a little bit more air. This is someone else's cherries that they gave me. And so I made ice cream for it and gave them a pint the other day. And the rest of them I'm going to uh, bag up. I'm, I'm turning my wagon into like a, a mobile farm stand. Yeah, I want to be able to hawk stuff. So I got like, uh, this is a guy that's been making soap with my sheep's milk. 
This is the soaps that he's making with the sh with my sheep's. This is all in my sheep's milk. No, it's beautiful. And it's really like uh, he. It's it's really good soap. Do you know what's in it? There's like five percent coconut oil. I think okay. is what he what he uses. Okay. okay. Uh, and the rest is yeah sheep milk. I'm trying to be like a community farm stand, and people that have a single fruit tree or some little garden, and they have just one thing that isn't abundant enough to make their own farm stand out of, they can give it to me and I'll move it to people and bring them back donations. How much are you selling it for? Um, so these are just donations. So he gave me a box of 12 of them because he liked my idea of trying to be like a, a donation bakes farm stand, community farm stand. And, uh, and so he donated those. Yeah. So you'll move around. And it looks like we, uh, we got, I got a You're sign. Okay. Okay, I got, yeah, I got a sign for packages yeah, for the, for the guys back there. I'm waiting on the harness, uh, and I'm waiting for her grazing muzzle. Howdy. Yeah, I, I think that it's it's really important to let people know right now that not only do farms need farm hands, free farm hands, affordable farm hands, but before they even become farm hands, they need property sitters. There's a huge opening for property sitters, is what I'm trying to say, specifically with people buying their secondary or their tertiary properties and needing someone to either protect the things that are on their land or protect the land itself from being squatted on by tweakers or something like that. And so I sign, I sign off for their, their packages for them. Um, packages. <laughs> At the... And I also have their water dish. And the table though. My lap table. Yeah, I kind of gave up on, on trying to make it like a, an actual table that like suspend it, suspends itself because it's going to be like $150 for like a stand, like one of those RV table stands. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's what I was thinking I could probably use. But uh, right now I just, I take it off and, and use it as a lap table. And that seems to be useful enough. I don't need to have like an actual armature. And this slides into the back right here okay. and is what my shower goes on. But I'm going to be having an entire rack so that a tailgate can be lowered down like a back room. So it'll be like a fold down bathroom. And then this big one goes back here. This is my big water. Oh, and this is electric tray. It's got a freaking plug in it. Oh my God. So that you can cook at night. So electric and so hybrid. Yeah. There we go. See, uh, having the ability to move your, your wagon, uh, having it be small enough that you can micro move it around the flat spots and whatnot is absolutely like so important. Like you have to do this, this stuff in order to find flat ground and whatnot. You can't be having your animal do the little micro adjustments of the wagon. All right. I'm gonna put my ram on the back. Good sheep. Put you up here. Kim. There you go. Ready? Thank you, Gracie. Thank you. Uh, hopefully, uh, see you soon. Stop by anytime. All right, loving you. Good girl. Kim. All right. Yeah.